Happy Saturday, everyone. It is October 7th, 2023. We got a short episode for you guys this week. We're going to talk through the jobs report and what that means and taking a look under the hood, as well as pickums, both on stocks and with our underdog fantasy partners. Got some cool picks for the NFL coming up for Sunday. So stay tuned and get ready for a new episode. I think most people still don't feel positive or feel good news about the economy. Well, first of all, you just heard the news today, too. They haven't heard it. I think the people, those 300 plus thousand people who got jobs feel better about the economy. I, look, I gotta choose my words here. You all are not the happiest people in the world. What you reported. And I mean it sincerely. It gets a more little. You get more legs when you're reporting something that's negative. I don't mean I don't mean you're picking on me. I'm just the nature of things. You turn on the television, and there's not a whole lot about boy saves dog as he swims in the lake. You know, to say you know it's about you know somebody pushed the dog in the lake. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to episode 94 of Pounding the Table. We're gonna start things off a little differently here with our underdog picks, and we're gonna each give our favorite pick for underdog fantasy sports because we all love fantasy and football. So my first pick, I'm going to go with this theme about revenge games. Jarek McKinnon versus my Minnesota Vikings. Little known fact, he did play for the Vikings first, was drafted by the Vikings. If you're feeling a little froggish, they have a 2x money for over one touchdown receiving or running. But I'm going to go with over two receptions. I think he gets three or four. And one other thing, actually, I got to mention. Monday, Devontae Adams, It's that price is not out yet, but I like the over. Revenge game versus the Packers. Now, shy. All right, so I started the year with $200 in my underdog account. Now I'm at 340 so okay. pretty, pretty solid return. I've got to go with a combo play. Garrett Wilson over 59 yards and Zach Wilson over 205 yards. Zach Wilson had a surprising performance last week. I'm not going to say it's going to be consistent, but the Broncos secondary is embarrassing. Like, I think there's a lot of college football teams can probably beat them just because their secondary is so poor. So I'm going to be doing a double play on those two players. And after seeing how well Justin Fields performed a week ago, I'm pretty confident. Daniel Hackett, revenge game too. He yeah. was Denver, so he'll be plotting as the offense coordinator. Joe, what you got, Mr. 3X champion fantasy baseball uh, guy over there? Hey, it was a good year. It was a good year for baseball. So my pick, yeah, I feel like it's too easy. It's DeAndre Swift going over on rushing yards. It's only set at 64. It was helped by Shai saying that the Rams do have a bad run defense, but I also just love DeAndre Swift, and he's one of my, I guess, my sleeper picks in fantasy football this year that's really paid off for me. Although, I am very angry that I listen to you guys by picking up that uh, Chain kid in Miami week one, but then after he didn't play at all, I dropped him, and now he's he's top 10. That's my boy. That I picked him in my sleeper and. Almost all my teams. I do, do you also want to add to uh, Joey's pick? Jalen Hurts over on rushing could be a great play. After seeing how much Anthony Richardson destroyed the Rams in the second half last week on his, with his legs, uh, he almost single-handedly beat the Rams when they're down 20-0, I think. So uh, don't think they do a good job spying on the QB on the Rams defense. So Hurts over rushing could be good. Podcast actually called Stocks and Jocks. No one... No one knew. Now, since you're so good at baseball, they do have baseball as well. So welcome to the playoffs, Minnesota Twins. So we'll start doing some baseball picks as well. It's really fun. Join us. It's on underdogfantasy.com. Sign up with PTT as the promo code. They're giving up to $500 match right now. So now's the time to do it if you have not thus far. We are a stock podcast, so we're going to be doing a partnership with PeakBot. On YouTube, really quick explainer on them. Automated bots, very fun. So check us out on YouTube. We'll be posting that on Twitter as well. Let's get into the show though, guys. So Biden with the big news, celebrating the new jobs report. You said doubled, Shy? I'm showing 336. 
But what we're seeing, though, there's a lot of fluff underneath the pillow here. What's going on under the hood? Yeah, so uh, initially there's a big sell-off. I almost can't. I think it was eighty percent overestimates. So the algos immediately sold that off. Like, oh, jobs are super strong, so rates are probably gonna go up next cycle. All that noise. However, once we market went live after thirty minutes, I think people started realizing that wages went miss expectations. So the best of both worlds, where like we have so many job open jobs but we're also not paying more for those jobs. It's actually declining. So that's like the best of both worlds that the Fed's hoping for, like the backing of that soft landing. So I think once, I don't know if like people felt comfortable buying in after seeing that or what happened, but the Dow went up 600 point swing. So I think inflation is over. I've been on the camp where inflation is done with. I think we're almost approaching disinflationary period. I think the only thing that really matters is like how the feds view inflation. They obviously are not seeing what we're seeing, maybe because they're using lag data and we're using like true inflation or real time data. But I don't think they're going to hike. I think the bond market is doing a lot of the work for them because a lot of people are feeling constraints with the rates and yields being super high that they don't really need to raise rates again because the demand is like suffering on the other end already. There's a good tweet I want to read out. So shout out at DC Drano. So he's saying Biden celebrating the new jobs report showing 336,000 new jobs. But if you actually break it down, 70,000 of those jobs are government jobs. 151,000 are part-time. Full-time jobs actually went down 22,000. So he was saying if someone has two part-time jobs, they count that as two jobs as well. I know we always say these numbers are fluff. I think this kind of indicates they they are. It is so fake on this. Yeah, these numbers are so fake. Just like the JOLTS data, which we've already figured out, companies will always say they have job openings just to look like, hey, we're hiring, we're doing great when they're really not. Yeah, I've seen people that have three, four different part-time jobs that are just trying to make ends meet and it counts as if they've got these four jobs. Like, It's not something that we could consider a reliable source of any data or especially when it comes to like substance to use in your investing. Like none of this is going to be useful over the long term. And it's like short term noise that you short term noise that is just nonsense. Yeah, I think it just feeds traders, to be honest, because it moves the market so much more than it actually should, because Jolt's data is just random survey. Like it doesn't really mean much. ADP is pretty significant. However, I do think like today's job report, like you said, like everyone has side hustles. Everyone has a Bruce Wayne job and a Batman job. Nobody has one job really anymore. So that guy kind of fluffs it. And another one is I thought the jobs might come in light due to the strikes that's been happening the past month or two. I was obviously wrong, but maybe we see that's like a lagged effect where we see that next report. Who knows? But I definitely thought we'd come in lighter because all the strikes are happening. The other big thing is all these revisions. So it's like there could be a number that's just over expectations, just under expectations. Then the next month you see the revision for that number and it's a massive revision. It's not something small. It's huge Mm -hmm. to the point where like it would have flipped to the other side from what you saw. Even these numbers that are coming out that are unreliable, then you see revisions. It's like that even the number we knew to be unreliable was more unreliable than we thought. And wasn't as bad as we ex- wasn't as bad as we got, or should have been worse. It's all worthless and useless. What does the data that came out this morning have to do with the long term potential of CrowdStrike? Absolutely nothing. What does have something to do is Meta, Instagram, fourteen dollars in Europe. They're offering an ad free platform. Meta. I re- feel- It's such low-hanging fruit for every platform to do this. Now, I will say the one app that doesn't just get loaded with ads right now is TikTok. Right when you load the app, you've got that first one. But once you're scrolling through, like you'll see a lot of sponsored videos, but like it's actual videos, not just a straight up Spotify type annoying ad. Now, I feel like Instagram, Facebook, all those apps, they should be doing this. Uh, Snapchat was the one that made the most sense because their ads are pretty long between their videos. But yeah, like people are worried about 
hey, I don't want these apps tracking me or doing this other thing. They should say, hey, look, we won't track anything you do if you're paying for this. If not, we have to monetize you somehow. Something's got to pay the bills and we're going to do it by presenting you with ads. So it, if it gives them like a cool blue check mark on top of it, that'd be cool. But I also think all these platforms need to get away from using the check marks just for people that pay it because Twitter originally had those check marks make it to be like, hey, this is someone important. We're going to give them a check mark. They're so important or so famous. Now it's you've got anybody with two followers can have this check mark and they start following you. You think, oh, hey, you know, you revert back to thinking this important person just followed you and it's just some random person that's paying. So I feel like they need to get back to having some prominence with the check marks, but also, yeah, launching these paid features especially with a platform like Meta with over a billion users, like the the earning potential is quite significant. So they have colors though to indicate like gray is government. That's not enough for you? It's not enough. Uh, Make check marks matter again. (laughs) That's a reversal from six months ago. You know, your thoughts there. What else talk about, boys? We got big earnings. Uh, Oh, this is huge. Apple's considering switching its default engine from Google to duck, duck, go. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. I, I, I heard Google pays Apple billions every year. I, I don't know the exact number. I want to say I heard on CBC it was like $18 billion last year just to be the default. Duck, duck, go probably isn't even worth three or four billion dollars. Like what duck, duck, go valuation? Let's see what they're worth. Such a bad name. Yes. Post money valuation. I mean, the thing I see is will reach a valuation of at least $1 billion. Yeah, they're trying to figure out what this thing's even worth. It was last valued at 160 So like their valuation isn't even what Google can pay them. Now, the only way Apple could do this is if they want to acquire DuckDuckGo and then make it a default. But it would it comes back to you always have to do something that's in the best interest of shareholders. And how would it be in the best interest of shareholders to give away billions of dollars to switch to DuckDuckGo as your default search engine. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I think it's a negotiation tactic for them. It could be. Yeah, they, they and they want to make more money from Google to do it. I don't yeah. want to be, I want to be traded. I just want more money at the end of the day. Uh, and even then, like people don't go to Safari, type in a search term to have it go through Google. You have the Google app and you just click that and then you start searching. Being the default on Safari, is one thing. It's all noise, I think. Like, why would you make your users use a, a subpar search engine? Yeah, switch to Bing, right? Make it, it makes no sense. You got to stick with the best. All right, Shy, we're going to get back into segments. We used to do cool segments and we've shied away from that. Shy, I get what you did there. Shied away from it. <laughs> halfway through the Persian pounder we forgot <laughs> that's the new nickname the Persian <laughs> pounder and we had a really good idea slash you had a great idea of doing this buy hold or sell so can you just introduce it to the listeners as to what this game is and then I'll jump in with my first stock I'm choosing yeah so let's say I'm gonna do a random company Airbnb so I'm gonna say why I want to buy sell or hold Airbnb st- as a company in my portfolio, and then I pe- popcorn it to you, Avi, and you give me your answer and reasoning. Then Joey's next after that, and then once we make it all around, I'm giving you my second company. And we're going to do the same process over again. So you don't have like a zero sum game of you have to have one sell, one hold, one buy. It could be all three buys if you want. So yeah, that would be the game. Love it. All right, then let's start with PayPal. I'm going to go with the board. Whoa. PayPal. That's us. We were wrong on at least in the short term. I just am looking at the price right now and it's getting too beaten down where I think they're too big of a company to continue to drop. But I also am not fully convinced to buy more of it right now. They are kind of a dinosaur. I am getting excited about what they're doing with Venmo. And Joey, I think you just told me you just bought something with Venmo through your phone online. So I think they're going to start to grow that space and other legs, and they're too big of a company to continue to drop. But I'm not super excited. They haven't shown me enough yet to buy more. Hold. Yeah, so I, I would have to agree, hold on PayPal. It's too inexpensive to sell it, but 
it's one of those situations where I definitely don't want to add to it. Wouldn't be blowing out of it unless you like you want to find a better situation to rotate that cash to. So like I could make a case to sell it, but just talking about like just this without other stocks in the mix, I feel like this is one you hold based on valuation and long-term potential. And like you said, I was at Panda Express with my wife because uh, she's pregnant and had some craving for some noodles and we we had to go to Panda Express. So I see it check out, hey, check out with Venmo. I was like, oh, let's see what this is all about. Bring up the app, put it right in front of it. Paid with my Venmo is pretty cool. I've never done that one before. I could see where these guys get more integrated long term. They're still growing. They've got what, 400 million plus accounts doing over a trillion total payment volume. Everything about them is there. The one thing that gets me is this entire space, and Shai's been talking about this for weeks, is the entire payments and fintech space is getting so inexpensive and everybody's coming down in valuation or like in multiples. Add yen, all these other ones, you see this multiple compression. So what is that new normal or set valuation for these stocks? We don't know. Where PayPal at 11, 10 times forward seems cheap. What if the new norm is like seven or eight? So we won't really know until we get there, but I see this as a wait and see and, and more of a hold than a sell situation. Yeah, Joey uh, kind of mimicked what I was about to say, but I'm going to do a different rating. I'm going to do a sell. I don't. I sold I don't all okay. my fintech exposure this week. I don't know how to price these valuations. Like, there's no reason PayPal can be forty dollars. Like, it's cheap right now. Square is dirt cheap. SoFi, I think, is really cheap. Shift for payments is cheap. Adyen's cheap. There's no reason these can't dip 30%, 40% lower because it is such a competitive space. Nobody really knows how to value these like companies anymore because it's gone down so much in the past year. Combine that with rates being really high, consumer spending has plummeted, and it looks like it's not going to pivot anytime soon. Like Next year is not going to be a good year for consumer spending. So... I don't think it's worth the headache. There's so many great opportunities out there right now that why force yourself to find the best fintech exposure, like try to catch a falling knife. There's no point. So I I put a sell. I, this is a fun it's a fun game. I think it's a good yeah, segment. Like valuation on Square. What if that is the new industry norm? At that at Square's valuation, PayPal is very overvalued. Right? That's a crazy thing. Like what and if that's, that's, what, that's, a new that's benchmark. what I was trying to make the point with Adyen to people. They're like, oh, it's only 25. I'm like, yeah, but PayPal's half that valuation. Why can't Adyen go from 10 mm -hmm. to five? And that's exactly what it's doing. All righty, guys. Quite a short week this week. I kind of like this new 20 minute format. So we're going to start doing that in the future. Bring some more games, bring some more guests on. We got a YouTube coming out with PeakBot. So if you have not checked them out, definitely check them out. It's usepeakbot.com. You can use our promo code PTTPod. They got some you know, two-week trial as well as 50% uh, off. So we've been using it. It's actually very, very cool. Check it out yourself. See if you like it. Also want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors over at underdogfantasy.com. So if you think you can outsmart underdog fantasy and guess if they're going to be higher or lower than their number. So check out our picks again on our Twitter. We will be posting them every single week. And we're going to get Joey to start doing some of the baseball because this kid's a whiz kid with the baseball stuff. So let us know what you guys think. Email us at any time. Hosts with an S at poundingthetablepodcast.com. Love to hear from you guys. We will be back next week for another edition of Pounding the Table. I'm making big moves. That's a big move. Big money, big moves. That's a big move. I'm making big moves. That's a big move. Big money, big moves. That's a big move. Yeah. Make a play, don't talk about it. Master P, I'm bad about it. This one here for all that try to count me out, and they still counting. Honestly, I never doubt it. Say the top is never crowded. Well, I'm trying to climb the mountain till I need a few accountants. Stock is rising, perfect timing. I'm in Brickle with the tribe. Shawty sliding, she want sushi, she want eel sauce for the rice. I just peel off with the light, took her heels off for the ride. Don't say real talk, this a lie. I'm a real one, I provide, yeah.